This is the brand new DJI L2 LiDAR sensor, and today we're going to be testing its accuracy for surveying and mapping. Let's fly! Two months ago, DJI announced the L2 LiDAR sensor at Intergeo 2023, and I actually had the privilege of being there at the live event where they unveiled this new sensor for the entire mapping community. Now, the nice thing about the L2 is that it has a huge range for collecting data, capturing 1.2 million points per second, and DJI claims that when you're flying your M300 or 350 at 400 feet above ground level at 33 miles per hour, you can achieve one to two tenths of a foot, or about five centimeters of accuracy using the L2 LiDAR sensor. And not only does the L2 have a LiDAR sensor, it also has a 20 megapixel mechanical shutter camera for colorizing the point cloud and giving you the ability to do photogrammetry with the L2 so you don't need to set up a separate sensor. You could do photogrammetry and LiDAR all from the same sensor. Now today we're going to be doing an inspection survey of these power lines. We're going to be mapping it using the M350 along with the L2 LiDAR sensor. Now while we are doing power line inspection, this still needs to be an accurate map. So I'm going to be georeferencing all of the data and creating a high accuracy survey by enabling RTK on the drone and using ground control points. Now I got these 24 inch targets off of Amazon and I've left a link in the description for you guys to pick one up. And these are great for photogrammetry because they give a good contrast to black and white. But I also added some reflective tape here so that we can utilize an intensity visualization of our point clouds and still be able to mark where our targets are. So this is the area that we are going to be flying then I'm going to set five ground control points one at each corner and then one in the middle as well as several checkpoints at different features using my inland RS3 GNSS receiver to hold the first GCP and we'll hit measure good all right let's set the next point okay here we go point number two measure good okay this one will be point number three and measure good okay here we are point number four and measure perfect last and final point point number five and this last one we're gonna have to take it by foot but we're gonna head inside and set a point in the center of our site So I think I'm gonna set the last ground control point. It's somewhat here in the middle of our site. Okay, and measure. All right, we're all set. All right, now that we've measured all of our ground control points with our GNSS receiver, it's time to put this Reach RS3 away and pull out our DJI M350 drone with the L2 LiDAR sensor. Taking the legs and locking them into the drone. Okay, and then we lift. We'll open up the arms, just like this. Lock these into place. And finally, let's attach the L2 LiDAR sensor, just like that. Power on the drone. Okay, so I've got the DJI Pilot 2 app running. If I click on the enter camera mode, we can see all of our pre-flight parameters. And this right here is the L2's view. I can also switch over to the point cloud and this is the LiDAR scanning everywhere I go. So I'm just rotating the sensor and it's just scanning everything around it. So pretty cool, everything is working and functional. And so now we need to plan the mission for the M350 in order for it to fly and do our power line survey. Back on the home screen of DJI Pilot 2, I'll go over to flight route. I'll then select the plus sign to create a new route and I'll click area route. Here we have our map and I'm gonna start by setting the parameters here and then here and go all the way up till here and then over. Move this over so we get to this side of the street where the GCP is. Okay, there we go, we have our area of interest. This is the area that I'm trying to fly our drone over. I'll hit check. And now it's gonna ask me what kind of aircraft I'm using. So I'm using an M350. What kind of camera model? So this is like the sensor that I'm using, it's L2. And then it's asking which lens. So basically, am I doing photogrammetry or am I doing LiDAR? So I'm gonna keep LiDAR mapping. And if I go into the payload settings, it's asking me about return mode. And this will give me an option to increase my returns. The L5 gives you up to five returns, which is absolutely insane. This would be really, really good in dense forests where you would need multiple returns in order to see the bare earth model. Now I think five returns might be a little excessive and give us just far too much data. So I'm going to actually do just a dual return. So I'll get two returns instead of one, 
but I can increase this and get a much denser point cloud if I want it. I am gonna keep the scanning mode on repetitive and I do want RGB coloring, which basically colorizes my LiDAR point cloud. I'll go back and say, okay. Now it asks what I want my ortho GSD to be. I like to keep it at least two centimeters. My takeoff altitude, so what do I want my flying height to be at? I'm going to set it to 200 feet above ground level. For speed, I don't like to fly at 33 miles per hour. Um, I think that's just a little excessive, so I might slow this down to about I would say 13 miles an hour should be fine. Okay, everything here looks fine to me. I'll go back, I'll say save. Now I'll use Ntrip to connect to the core stations so that I can receive RTK corrections. And if I look here, it looks like RTK is connected. We are just waiting for our position to be fixed. Okay, and now we are finally fixed. All right, our mission plan is ready. We have RTK fix and our drone is ready to go. Just looking at all of our flight parameters, everything looks good here. I'll hit next and I'm going to upload the mission. Everything looks good and we are going to start collecting data. Here we go. There he goes. And the drone is now going to head to its start point. Arrived at start point. Starting task. So here is our first person point of view of the drone. If we take a look at the map, this is the mapping mission. And here is our LiDAR sensor. Now we are doing an auto calibration right now, just to make sure that the IMU is calibrated. And here we go, now we're collecting imagery and scanning with our LiDAR sensor. We can even switch over to the visible light. And it looks like we are doing another calibration. And we know we're doing a calibration because the drone is gonna go back and forth to ensure that the IMU is still calibrated. And you can see here on a side-by-side, -side, the camera sensor and the LiDAR sensor on the L2. And it looks like we reached the end of the first line. And it's going to fly just overhead. You can see those power lines right there, right below us. And hopefully the LiDAR sensor will do a great job of identifying those power lines for us while maintaining the accuracy and integrity of our mapping mission. Now, while the drone is up in the air collecting data, I wanna tell you guys about our brand new survey membership on the YouTube channel. Starting at just $5 a month, you can become either a survey apprentice or a survey pro or a survey VIP. This gives you the ability to unlock premium content and help support our channel as we continue to grow our community. Becoming a survey member means that you are now taking surveying seriously and to the next level by unlocking premium content and becoming more integrated into our YouTube community. Below this video, you can click on the join button in order to become a survey member. And thank you to all of our survey members currently for supporting our channel. We hope to keep providing you with premium content and educating you in the future. There it is. Doing our turn. And here we go. One last line. Seeing that point cloud come in. Looks really good. Love it. Looks like we're about 81% done. We're getting there, we're almost there. Looks like we're doing another calibration here. Yep, that's why the drone is moving back and forth, recalibrating the IMU. And we're off again. I love the fact that I don't need to sit here and do figure eights and try to get my IMU to calibrate. It just does it automatically. That's how amazing the IMU in the L2 is. It's just automatically calibrating itself while we're flying. Return to home. Flight mission complete. And the drone is coming back. Welcome home. And there we go, we just finished flying the M350 with the L2 LiDAR sensor. Now let's head inside of the office so we can process all this data and see how it all turned out. And welcome to the office. So for processing, I'm going to be using DJI Terra. And oh my God, this point cloud looks amazing. Check this out. Incredible detail for all of these power lines. I mean, I can see every single one of these lines. It's amazing to see how much data was collected and how just 
Wow, I, I'm honestly speechless. I don't know what to say. It looks incredible. I love it. The reconstruction definitely turned out really well. Uh, if I zoom in here, you can see that, you know, each of these lines, the, there's not that much noise actually. So that definitely looks like a, a width that we can calculate for each of these lines. Additionally, I was able to classify this point cloud for terrain and non-terrain points. So if I go over to the filtering, I can actually turn off the points not classified. And check this out, <laughs> you've got the actual ground here. You know, all of the buildings, the power lines, anything that's man-made is just gone and you're getting a bare earth model. And uh, if I turn the other points back on, I can change between the different types of point clouds. So we've got a different type point cloud. So it actually segments the different types of points based off of classification. So that looks really cool. You can also choose height. So anything with higher altitudes, will uh, appear so you can see that the ground is green and the power lines are coming in in red orange and yellow you also have the returns so we did set the returns to dual um, and the reason i did that is as you can see like these power lines are all blue and then areas that are beneath the power lines where the ground is are in red which is the second return in hindsight i think i should have just used all five returns that i'm offered on the l2 um, i would have gotten more data and like areas here that are black we would have gotten more data uh, in those spots but I mean, under trees here, you can see a ton of red and that's all second returns. And so this data that you see beneath the trees, I can increase the point cloud, all this data down here beneath the trees, you would have not gotten that with photogrammetry. So uh, very cool. And I'll definitely be testing um, the five returns uh, the next time I uh, play with the L2. You also have a reflectivity point cloud visualization. And if I zoom in here to one of the ground control points, you can definitely see where it is falling um, and right there in the middle of uh, the little checkerboard pattern. So that's really cool. It's really nice to see everything falling into place. We can also do like a profile cross section um, to see how much noise there is in the point cloud. So I'm probably going to pick uh, this road right here. Let's do, I don't know, we'll just do a cross section here. Okay. If we take a look at one of the low elevations, we've got 607.20 and a higher elevation it looks like 607.33. So we're looking at 13 hundredths of a foot, which is about four centimeters, I would say. Four centimeters is not horrible. Let's try the other side here, just to get a second sample. Let's do this sidewalk, so it's a slightly smaller example. Okay, we've got 607.00 and, and 606.83, again, four to five centimeters, which is what DJI is claiming, about four to five centimeters. Um, so that probably also goes into the noise uh, that we capture. It's not too bad, uh, but that's what you can expect. And when you do look at this point cloud, you do see the green and the blue points. The blue points like this one are the ground control points and green points are checkpoints. I just went around with my GNSS receiver and shot in a bunch of random features. So like this was a manhole cover. Same thing over here, I shot the top of this rim and just looking at it visually, it looks like the checkpoints are coming in quite nicely. Now I did learn something with DJI Terra, the LiDAR point clouds only have the ability to do ground control on the Z axis. So we can only use ground control points to help us with elevation. We still don't have the ability for X and Y. This is not a limitation of LiDAR. This is a limitation of DJI Terra. So, so just to be clear about what we're going to look at when we see our quality report. And taking a look at the quality report, we see some metadata here in the beginning. Scrolling down here, I am most interested in looking at the point cloud checkpoint error and the point cloud control point error. Now, before we look, there is an error here. Um, DJI Terra has labeled everything here as meters. Now I've made sure that my data is in international feet. It even has state plane coordinates. I just cannot get the quality report to change over to feet. So ignore the M, all of these differences are in feet and the average absolute value of altitude difference is at five hundredths of a foot with the RMS error at five hundredths of a foot and the standard deviation at six hundredths of a foot, meaning that our overall error for our ground control points is about one and a half centimeters, which is good. Now taking a look at the checkpoints, 
the average absolute value of altitude difference was seven and a half hundredths and the root mean square error and standard deviation were nine hundredths. So we're looking at three to four centimeters of error, which again aligns with the noise that we have and the accuracies that DJI claims. And again, this is only for vertical control and for a LiDAR point cloud, I think that that's pretty acceptable. For me to go under these trees and see all of this data collected, something that photogrammetry struggles with is the true advantage here with LiDAR. And for power line surveys, this is a great way to extract all of these lines. And if you're looking to learn how to extract these features and bring them into AutoCAD Civil 3D, I made a special video for our members. And so if you've joined our survey memberships, be sure to check out this video to learn more. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and I'll see you all next time time.